Hi guys, this is Dimitrov and welcome in this little video, this little showcase of the Gazelle Mind by Polyshop Simulations. So tonight, because we are at night, we are going to make a little flight on the second mission of the Operation Dixmuth campaign. So first of all, sorry for my <laughs> English mistakes, as long as I'm French. Uh, and there won't be any kind of scenaristic spoiler or anything like this, as long as just the uh, second mission of the campaign is a pure treatment mission. Uh, it's quite a short one, uh, around 30 minutes, I think, to uh, complete the objectives, um, 45, 50 minutes to make complete RTB. Uh, and this mission is more likely a preview of what we're going to do in the campaign. So it's quite a simple one, it's not made to trap people or anything. It's, it's a nice one, nice little one mission. Okay, so my objective is quite simple, I am Phoenix 1. Phoenix 1 is the uh, Phoenix is the callsign of Gazelle helicopter in this NATO deployment during the Operation Dixman. Uh, so I will take off with Midboy 1. We don't see him because I is, I'm in the menu because I forget I forgot to uh, uh, let the pause. Uh, Midboy 1 who is an Apache, a British Apache helicopter, and then I will move to uh, my second waypoint, which is. The bash referees landing and waiting zone in order to regroup with over Gazelle, so Phoenix and Apache mid boy groups before launching a massive offensive against the enemy defenses. My objective as Phoenix one will be to destroy a SAM and AAA site near a camp and then to search and destroy an artillery battery. So that's kind of all. In this video, you see how to pilot the gazelle. How do I pilot the gazelle at least? How do I start up it even? And how do I attack, etc., 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 etc. So in my opinion, this mission is the way you should make missions for the gazelle, night ops missions with uh, AAA, things like this, little things like this. Not too much. Uh, it's not. This one is quite an easy one. I think it's the easy one, easiest one the campaign, really the easiest one, by far. But well, uh, that's all, I think that's all, I can start. Okay. Okay, Phoenix One, when you're ready, we'll take off and move to the RV with the other patrols, over. Thank you, mid boy. Okay, I don't see a fuck. Well, let's switch off this. <laughs> And let's switch on this. I hope you will see on the video, I already tested, it seems okay. Okay, so first I'm going to start a battery alternator generatrice. I check the oil temperature, 90 degrees. The fuel capacity, I am about 70% of my fuel capacity as long as I carry 4 watts plus the IR deflector. And, 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 and the uh, volt. I don't know you say in English if it's voltage or the uh, battery, I think it's this voltage, so 26 degrees, 26 volts, it's okay. Uh, then I switch on the test light right here, so démarrage, RLT, blockage, supplementary tanker and convoy tank, it's okay. And with gyroscope, trim, BPP and test are switched on. Okay, I release this. We're fine. And I do make a test on the 7 alpha panel. We're okay. So we call it the 7 alpha. Not the alarm panel. We can call it the alarm panel. I, I, you do whatever you want. <laughs> so then I set up the fuel pump, right? Here, and I wait for 20 seconds. We have a chronometer. And I wait carefully for. Uh, 20 seconds. So when I will have waited for 20 seconds, I will switch on the startup switch on them position. On the M position, excuse me. Uh, and the uh, engine will begin to rise up to 25,000 RPM. Once it's okay, I release the rotor brake, I give a bit fuel lever and around 29,500. Yes, that's right, 29,500. 29,500 RPM at the turbine, the rotor will, will begin to rotate. And then we get uh, a nominal once both uh, indications are synchronized. Okay, let's start. So first, turbine RPM. 
to 25%, 25,000. Quite hard in English to give numbers. In my opinion, everyone should speak French. It would be simpler. Okay. <laughs> so now I release the rotor brake. Fine. And I give a bit fuel lever, so it's this one. Uh, I put it on my throttle. On um, I've got a water throttle. I use the uh, gray uh, rotator. Okay. So I move up, up to 29,500. Okay, rotor is getting rotating. And I continue to this first position. And I wait for both indication to get synchronized. I check the T4 temperature. We are around 350, 60 degrees. It's fine for a takeoff or for a startup procedure. <coughs> and I continue. The oil temperature is around 30 degrees. We're still fine. And it's kindly rising up. We're fine for this. We can get in full position. Ah uh, yes, I always forget to use the radio uh, because of because of test I never use it. Um, <coughs> well, so the radio, it's this one. It's quite simple. You select the frequency right here, and you've got the working position right here beneath the second rotor. Okay, so I, I don't use it. Excuse me. But it works, of course it works, it's only a fucking radio. Okay. So now I'm fine for the uh, RPM. And oil temperature is fine too. I can switch on the NADI, INVEI, and gyroscope in geomagnetic alignment. Then PITO trim and magnetic uh, trim for the cyclic, <coughs> uh, which is the uh, classic way of trimming the helicopter. Okay, I reset this one. I unlock the radar altimeter, switch the alarm around 10 meters, and I unlock this little guy, and we're fine for this. Plum, plum, plum. Okay, so now I can switch on the Drax 33 RWR system. I can switch on the screen, get the camera in alimentation, thermal working, and camera system as it's the way of piloting the, the camera uh, waiting. Okay, by the way, I can put off those little things right here because I didn't put them on my cyclic up and the same for the flare here and I switch the flare system on gyroscope is line on on okay so we can switch on the autopilot so master switch and then I never know the translation so I'm going to make my best I guess it's bank roll and yo is this? I hope. And we're nearly fine. We can nearly take off now. <coughs> so I didn't use the lights because I never use the lights. They are right here. So a blinking and fix and the uh, beacon right here. So normal, it's normal. And attenuated, you use this little rotator to uh, modulate the uh, luminosity of the beacon. And right here, I don't even remember. Ah, yes, it's this one. So it's without using. Uh, the NVG, but you still, I guess. Yeah, but no, it's not. It's not good. It's really not good. It's without NVG. It's quite nice. Blue plus red. Yeah, I love it. Okay, I never use this system. This way, I say this. Okay. Uh, so I select waypoint one on my NADI. Uh, luminosity, thanks. We're fine, okay. So I could make a test, but I won't do uh, because I don't. I'm not going to waste uh, five minutes more on the 
on the uh, station okay so weapon one is selected and now i can see on this big one the heading of the weapon and here the range between me and the weapon so it's in hundred of meters <coughs> so six thousand and nine hundred meters from the objective so i'm going to make a little hover okay we're fine and I'm going to make you directly a little show of the uh, yo maneuverability just by releasing first the rudder. <laughs> and if I push now on the rudder, it becomes dangerous. Okay, so I'm going to seize it. Okay. And that's all. I won't make any kind de any demonstration of this kind anymore. I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't want to die. During our flight toward the landing and uh, waiting zone, I will too make you a little show of the world maneuverability, but not too much too, and of the bank one. Okay, so waypoint one right here. So there is forest, and as long as I play realistic, I don't fly in the tree, so I won't make you here. Uh, a demonstration of the uh, bank maneuverability, but for the world that's kind of simple. I'm not going to make a complete roll at this altitude because I, it may end bad. But if I just push 50% um, the cyclic on my right, there you have it. Okay, so I, I won't do it too much. I don't want to die. And for the cyclic, it's kind of... It's kind of the same, so it's really a little acrobatic helicopter. It's really fun to pilot, especially at a uh, very low altitude. We'll see it later. On the Gazelle, you've got two ways of trimming the helicopter. The classic way of trimming an helicopter, which is just uh, pushing on a button when you position your uh, your cell click. I don't use it. Personally, I really don't use it because, you see, uh, the helicopter is quite much maneuverable, so it's not the perfect way of trimming the helicopter, in my opinion. So I prefer the China Hat system, which is just like in a plane, in the A-10, in the F-15, just like in these planes. And it's really perfect for flight. In my opinion, it's really the best way of trimming your helicopter. If you have... Um, uh, force feedback uh, controllers you can of course use the other system but even with this honestly guys I suggest you to use the China hat this is Meat Boy 1 Ukrainian aviation has planned low altitude strikes on the town of Tukdidi it should come at the same time as our offensive Martel heavy artillery will simultaneously batter the hill front we're going to wake them up Hold. thank you Meat Boy Okay, he's a nice actor, yeah. Okay, so two on the Gazelle, you've got an altitude um, autopilot and a speed autopilot. I will switch them on on the second waypoint rod. I switch on the second waypoint. Hitting once, seven zero, seven click. Okay, so for the altitude mod. I switch it, it's right here. I switch it on, oh no, I cannot hear. I've got to be at zero, around zero meter per, zero meter per minute uh, on the variometer. So first I get on it and then we're fine. My collective is locked and now I use my trim to modify my speed. It's really, really, really comfortable very very uh, practical system i prefer it to the speed system i'm going to leave the altitude system because the speed system only logs speed first it doesn't give me a good impression i i mean helicopters gets horizontal it loses a bit of it of speed because it has a speed limit uh, and i don't like it uh, the helicopter looks um, you know, slow. Uh, so, well, I prefer the altitude one. But it's my opinion, of course. <coughs> so for the video, uh, I reduce the sound, you uh, know, in, in order to give you the possibility to hear me perfectly, my beautiful voice. Uh, 
Uh, and by the way, I uh, precise it. Uh, if there is a need to, pre to to say it, but I don't use any uh, texture DLC or anything like this. Uh, I don't have access to this. <coughs> So there is only the gazelle and Philip. Yes, his name is Philip. Don't ask me why. Okay, here is the landing and waiting zone, so I'm going to land right here. So I'm going to check the wind on the nadir. Wind 1 to 8, 16 kilometers per hour. 1 to 8. Okay, I see the direction. I see that the AA really <laughs> landed well. <laughs> Back to... Well, that was nice. Ah, uh, what if... No, perhaps they are right. I don't really know. Okay, so I'm going to land carefully because the gazelle is very sensitive. Ah yes, I've got the uh, landing uh, light. Yes, I've got it, the, uh, the landing light, but I didn't think about... I need it. Okay, so here we've got the landing uh, light. Phoenix 2, taking off. Phoenix 3, let's have a walk. Phoenix 4, taking off. Beat boy 2, and we go! Phoenix 1, this is me boy 1. It's up to us. Let's move to the observation point. Okay, I just wait for the other helicopters to get over me because I don't want to get killed. They are not pretty smart. I had something on my Drex 33. Ah, it must be the Apache. Okay, I can take off. And uh, I'm going to select weapon 5. Come back here, you. Weapon 5. Okay. Master arm on. And we move. So now max focus. Okay, so I'm going to reach my observation point, which is 4.5 kilometers ahead. From there, I shall have a nice point of view on the battleground area. Our aviation should begin to strike the town of Zagdidi, which is right north, and we can see already smoke. It's already burning. And the artillery too is hitting it. Uh, it's kind of a diversion as we attack by south from the from the city. Okay, approaching. Watch for the T4. Not well. We are okay for the T4. And 
once I will have moved to my waypoint five, everything is going to move. So my objective is to reach the camp, the AAA and SAM camp and destroy the objectives. My objective is not to destroy any other units. Other flights are here for this and I'm under the orders of Hannibal and Meat Boy 1. I see him. This is Phoenix 2. Tell him. Engaging. Out. Made by 1. This is Phoenix 3. Tanks inside. Is from the river. Engaging them so you can cross and move with Phoenix 1 to the camp. Out. Okay, we're stopping here. We are going to wait in very low altitude for the green. Okay, here's the camp. I'm going to switch on the camera. Meet boy one. This is Hannibal. Lazing the camp okay. location. Shoka and SA9 confirmed. Over. Hot ready. Hannibal, this is Meat Boy One. Tally on those. Phoenix One engaging on your order. Over. So in the campaign you can ask for Meat Boy One to help you in destroying the main objectives of the missions so you just use the F10 uh, radio menu and he attacks then once the objective is destroyed he comes back information with you ok so I move right across the enemy lines so we have to move very low in order to avoid any fire technically over flights I don't switch on the F10 map uh, but the other flights are already attacking enemies north and south from my position, so I'm green. Mike on the town. Okay, so I'm going to try to move south, a bit south from the attack axis in order to get a bit of point of view on the camp as long as I see fire forest and anything uh, I didn't uh, edit the mission for uh, 5 months, I, I mean I made the mission 5 months ago so I don't really remember the threats or anything like this AAA ok I move back I see him. Okay, let's forget about self. I guess it's not a good idea. This is Phoenix 4. Engaging a triple S side to kick snow from the camp. Over. Okay. I'm going to try uh, to find a hind part of you on the camp. Okay, see one. One click ahead. I will continue to move like this. Hidden by the buildings and theoretically by the trees. You will have a bit training before managing to fly be fly between trees just like I do. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you will lose a lot of aircraft. Oh oh oh! Wow. Oh no! I took this one. I should be dead. Oh. Talking, talking, and every time I make a stupid thing. Okay, right, left. 
and we are reaching my objective. Oh, AAA in front of me, behind the building, fast. Okay. Yes, thank you, Midboy, for always being very stealth. I'm still logged. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Camp is just behind here. I'm going to get in hot over. A bit higher. Now should be fine. Auto over engaged. Okay, they can't see me, or well, nearly can't, just my rotor, I guess. Now, I switch on camera. I'm going to get in terminal, so I'm going to invert some few things here. Ah, it's too just. Now, I should move a bit up. Hmm. I still have a bit of training on this part of treatment. Light here should be fine. Yes, but I am not hidden anymore. Well, now there is a way to be partially hidden, but I still don't really know the limits. But anyway, I see them now. Okay, still a one. Shilka. And ZD23 right here, perhaps on the neural. And something else here, it looks like a BMP. Perhaps a BMP1 or BMP3. I guess BMP1 because I would have been shot if it was a free. Tracks are not my prior, prior targets. But everything which has a big cannon is. So I'm going to first attack the Strilla one. Or uh, perhaps no. We are at night, they don't see me. They need a visual. But the Shilka, Shilka is able to see me with this radar. Still firing a lot on the town. Okay. Hot one ready. Ah. I'm going to make a little, little, little pop-up. Ready. And I switch on the camera alignment, autopilot. I don't see a fog because of the cloud. So I'm going to invert it. Okay, we are axed. Ready. Rifle. They saw me. Splash. Too late for you. Never still I one. She didn't deploy. Rifle. Splash. Okay, the remaining targets are. Ah no, I see one. This was a bit here, so. Okay, so I will be able to destroy it. But where are. Where is the. Well, I don't see him. So I destroy the bit here, and I let me boy destroy the. Ah no. Yes, but I want to keep one missile for. No, I'm going to ask for Midboy to destroy this one. In order to show you, perhaps. Uh, I'm going to get. First seat. Okay, go on, mid boy. Phoenix One, this is Meat Boy One. Understood. Engaging Silka and Strela. Out. Bend the motherfucker. Thank you. One.
and the second is inbound. It's quite efficient. All stations, this is me boy one. Some site near the camp destroyed. Let's take care of the battery. Out. Hi, mid boy. Oh, I could make a tricky shot. Wait, 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 wait. Don't move, don't move, don't move. Don't move, don't move. I'm going to have you. <laughs> no, you're kidding. Okay, so let's look for the battery. Should be east of the camp. I don't see them. Good big. He's scary. Ah, I see them. Okay. Distance. Meet boy one. This is Hannibal. Contact on the battery. Location full east from the camp. Blazing out. He's a bit late. Hannibal, this is Meat boy one. Tally on your target. Engaging. Out. Yeah, it's a bit late, always. It's because of DCS, yes, I cannot do many things, it's uh, random. It doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, 6 6. Too far. I'm going to move for them. My keyboard is completely destroyed anyway so let's move so I may avoid the camp as long as I may be there may be infantry or something like this and I'm very vulnerable even for Kalashnikov Ah yes, of course I use my my beautiful and amazing building mod, but it's different. It's free. <coughs> uh, well, I hope I won't meet any fucking triple A. Camp is right here. I'm going in stationary right here. Ah, I'm going to get hidden by the buildings. Okay, this building would be perfect, so. So technically I can attack and move, but I really prefer, by experience, attacking in stationary. But you can, you can of course uh, attack and move. And I think that Wags uh, did it uh, in the live stream. So it's not really a problem. Whoa! Doing stupid things. Okay. And let's switch on the stationary mod. We're fine. Okay. Let's axe on the target. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four BM twenty one grad. I'm going to attack this one first. Poor man. Rifle. Splash. Take it destroyed. They're moving. They're running away. Rifle. Oh, perhaps double shot. Yes, 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 yes. Double shot, double shot, double shot, double shot, double shot. No. I'm going even to miss this one. Ah, I got him. Okay, mid boy, finish him. Thank you. 
Well, so as you could see, uh, it's quite nice flight, simple flight, uh, not really hard mission in my opinion. Other missions may be really harder. But anyway, so I hope that you could have a better point of view on the, yes, a better preview of the Gazelle via this video. And all the team Polish up and me and everyone in the world wish you a good uh, night, a good afternoon. I don't really know how you say. And see you on the, on the next one.